Greetings, my friends. This is a Howard 901A AM radio receiver from about 1946, maybe as late as 1948, uh, and I've been working on getting it working. And it does work now, and it's fully aligned and ready to go. But this radio has um, some problems with its speaker cone. If you look carefully, you can see that there are some holes uh, in the edges of the speaker cone, and there's a big tear right here that you can see. Uh, I might actually be able to push this thing through without damaging it further. And there's a couple of other tears uh, in the speaker cone. This is one of the most challenging elements of trying to restore old radios, is because these speaker cones are pretty delicate, uh, they start to rot, uh, and they can be easily torn uh, just over the years. Now, they do still work more or less, but they don't sound as good. And uh, one of the things that a lot of people do is they'll try and source new versions of these or even make new versions. But I wanted to try experimenting with trying to actually restore the speaker cone itself. And I picked this radio to do it on because this is a very simple AM radio. Uh, it gets only AM broadcast, and although I completely uh, restored all of its electronics uh, and it works perfectly now, even if I were to completely destroy the speaker cone, I wouldn't be out any real money because this is such a inexpensive antique radio. It's probably not worth more than, you know, maybe $20 to $50 depending on its condition. And this one isn't in the best condition even with it being restored. So, uh, but it is a great candidate for trying this technique I've been considering uh, for restoring these radios. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this tissue paper. This is just straight old tissue paper and I'm going to be putting it over the tears and I'm going to be using uh, liquid latex to try and paint the tissue paper onto the surface uh, and the latex will impregnate the tissue paper which is very thin and also will work its way into uh, the paper of the cone and my belief and theory is that it will help strengthen and reinforce the cone without unduly impacting uh, its sonic qualities. Now, I wouldn't do this with an audiophile speaker, but I mean, this is an AM radio with a 5-inch speaker that's meant to receive mono broadcasts. So we're not exactly looking at something that has a whole lot of delicacy involved. Uh, so that said, that's why I chose this radio, because if I screw it up and this doesn't work, well, I'm not out much. Uh, I didn't want to do this with a more expensive radio. But on the other hand, if I can prove that this actually works, hey, that's awesome. Because then I'll be able to use this technique, refine it, and apply it to better radios that the speakers are extremely hard to source because nobody's made them in forever. Old antique radio speakers have um, specific types of voice coils like this one here. Uh, on the on the radio and they can be difficult to make or difficult to get and sometimes you end up having to either uh, use different ones or do crazy tricks to get the impedance matched right it doesn't really matter for this video but the point is these are hard to replace uh, and restoring them in situ not only I believe improves their value but also makes them more interesting because it's the original speaker so I'm going to give this a try. We'll come back and see how well it works. I would do it on camera, but there just isn't any way really to position the camera in such a way that I can do this legitimately without screwing it up. So I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to try this a little bit. We'll come back to it and see how it's looking. All right, my friends, we're back and many lessons were learned and I'm going to share a few of those with you. Uh, the first lesson I learned is that um, you need to apply this in a fairly light coat. And uh, as you can see here, the latex looks heavier than it is and it comes out and as especially as it dries it will create this thick looking coat this is not optimal if you want extremely high sonic fidelity for a high-end kind of like turntable or or something like that so this is not something you want to be doing in an audio file kind of application. But for these little tiny radios where these speakers are impossible to replace or where you're just not able to source something like that, then this is a viable alternative. Um, multiple layers, and I, I first used this kind of stiff brush, which worked okay. And I also experimented a little bit with this softer makeup brush. I, I think the jury is still out a little bit. 
At first I thought that the softer brush worked better, but the softer brush was what I used down here, and as you can see it kind of came out thicker, and I'm not sure I like that. I'm going to keep experimenting. I also found that multiple layers of this very thin tissue paper seemed to be a little bit more optimal, uh, and also not being afraid to have the tissue paper kind of spread out. Um, to cover, you know, you want it to cover larger areas, especially when you've got big tears or holes. Keeping in mind, again, it will affect the sound of the speaker, although not as much as you might think. Another thing I would do in the future, if I'm going to do this again, which I'm sure I will with some of these old radios where you literally cannot get these things, short of paying somebody to make you a new speaker cone and get a new voice coil, uh, but... Uh, I would be removing the speaker and turning it over and doing this from both sides. This was an experiment where I deliberately tried to see if I could do it in situ, and it did work, but it would work better, I believe, if I had done an application with the speaker face down and I had done it to the back of the speaker first, then done it to the front of the speaker. And that's something I'm going to experiment with some other radios that I've got uh, that also have some speakers that are in pretty dire shape. However... All that said, I want to point out that the 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 holes are gone, you know, and in, in terms of looks, it's not the best. It doesn't look as good as I would want, but I feel like that's something that I can refine as I get better at this with a thinner application of the latex. I'm also going to try thinning the latex with a little bit of water next time and see if I can get that to create a slightly less thick coating, uh, which I believe will still serve the purpose, but will also let it impregnate the fibers of the cone a little bit better and pull the paper into it more effectively, uh, as well as create a thinner coating that won't affect the sonic quality of the speaker as much. But these are, you know, relatively crude instruments based on, um, older technology and they're not as refined. Now I just want to show it does actually work really well even with the additional application and as soon as the tubes warm up you'll be able to hear. Come on. This radio takes a little while to fire up. It's part of its charm actually. There's a local station around here that plays nothing but music from the 30s and 40s. Uh, I love it because it lets me do these uh, radios. And every time I turn one on and tune it into that station, it's like, hey, this radio is doing exactly what it did back in the 40s. So I think that's kind of fun. But as you can see, it works really well. Let me tune in a, a talk station. There's one a little further up the dial here. Of course, the antenna cable is in the way now. That's not a good thing. It's one of the hazards of working with this thing out of its chassis. That, but they don't want that suggestion. We don't need more government. That's we don't need no more government. Yeah, whatever. Now, what are the signals? As you can see, sounds pretty good. So, some lessons learned, and uh, I'm going to take that forward when I start working on some other radios, and uh, maybe I will share some of that with you. But the holes on the side are repaired. This won't be visible when I put it in the case, so although it doesn't look exactly optimal here, um, it will be, it'll sound great. And honestly, that's the purpose of fixing up these old radios. So I hope you enjoyed that and found it interesting. And uh, if you have suggestions about how to do this more effectively, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm just spitballing and experimenting here. And I, I am very pleased with these results. And I believe that I can get better ones moving forward. So thanks very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time.